Avoid costly mistakes when managing currency risk. Welcome to Currency Cast Experts Edition with a focus on the pain points created by the lack of automated solutions for currency management. My name is Austin McKinley, I'm the Senior Financial Writer at Cantox and your host. Today we have a special guest, Nadia Corbett, Currency Management Solutions Manager for the UK. Sure, thanks so much for having me on today, Augustin. I'm really sorry about the state of my voice. Nadia will show how a wrong process can trip treasurers up and create errors and frictions. Now, stay tuned until the end because she will reveal how you can avoid these costly mistakes. Nadia, welcome to Currency Cast. Tell us more about these costly yet completely avoidable mistakes that you see every day in your interactions with of uh, customers and prospects when it comes to current series management processes. Thanks. So, imagine you are the treasurer in charge of taking hedges and you're told that the group is facing serious financial losses because you took a hedge that turned out to be based on an incorrect invoice that totally skewed the figures. Really? How is that even possible? It happens. The case I'm thinking of, the treasurer received month-end totals from the business units for his balance sheet hedging program. Because he only received the aggregated amount, he was unable to spot the erroneous invoice. In this case, it was uh, raised in the wrong currency. He took an inappropriate hedge. It was exactly what he was supposed to do based on the information that he had, but that's very hard to explain when there's such a big financial impact. It's all about the process and the workflow, isn't it? Now, you'll tell us more about that in a couple of minutes. Meanwhile, I can't wait for the next horror story. We've got time for another. Here, the treasurer takes hedges based on forecast and tries to allocate them to individual transactions. This is done on a monthly basis in order to give results to the commercial team. But at the end of the period, retrospective changes may be required. For example, if the forecast was inaccurate. But these retrospective changes in turn impact the results of the commercial team. It's a lot of work for the treasurer and on top it creates a lot of friction between the departments. So there you have it. Foreign exchange losses due to mistakes in collecting the firm's exposure to currency risk and tensions between the commercial team and the treasury team. What a mess! Nadia, there's surely a common denominator to these horror stories. Ideas that come to mind on the proper way to run the FX workflow, problems with traceability, and why not, the dangers of a siloed approach to currency risk management. Tell us a little bit more about that and what the solutions are. Absolutely. Listen, it's critical that risk managers understand that there's more to a sound currency risk process than just saving a few pips on the cost of execution. That is absolutely no good to you at all if you've already lost 10 or 20 pips to volatility before you even go to market. You need to have a process in place that's going to answer the following questions. What's actually driving your exposure? What do you do with the information that you have available to you? Whether that's forecasts, it might be purchase orders, it might be invoices. And when do you hedge? Does that change more based on how stable or how volatile the market is? Or does it, in reality, change more depending on what your team has going on in any given week? Let's discuss traceability. As we define it at Cantox, traceability is the fact that along the journey from entry to position to operation to payment, each element has its own unique reference number. Nadia, how can traceability help treasurers avoid costly mistakes? Insufficient traceability pervades every aspect of the FX workflow. Take aggregation. Aggregating your exposures can be really beneficial in some ways. You might be able to save on some trading costs. You might be able to have more time to scan for netting opportunities. Or maybe you're saving on forward points where they're against you. But in the absence of perfect traceability, you're going to be very hard pushed to accurately calculate your profit margins, whether it's on individual transactions, even whole product lines. So you're losing key management information. Which takes us to our final point. What about those silos that we hear about all the time? Different teams within the company, the accounting team, the purchasing managers, 
the finance team that do not necessarily understand each other's concerns. Is that for real? And to what extent is this a problem? Yeah, it happens all the time. Take even just a small example of an inadequate FX rate feeder used for pricing. So many companies are adjusting their pricing for FX using the spot rate, when from both a commercial standpoint and a financial standpoint, it would make so much more sense to use the forward rate. Or what about a company that's updating their prices for FX on a daily basis if they have low margins, sometimes a weekly basis, sometimes even a monthly basis. Often they're compensating with overcautious markups, which are actually impacting their competitivity in increasingly price sensitive markets. And just a small optimization within the Treasury Department would have commercial benefits across the whole organization. All right, Nadia, thanks very much. It's fair to say in conclusion that the mistakes pointed out by Nadia show a failure to consider currency management as a strategic priority in terms of protecting and enhancing the company's ability to produce long-term cash flows. Here, currency management automation solutions can help members of the our treasury team A, improve the process of collecting and processing the firm's exposure to currency risk, B, achieving perfect end-to-end -end traceability, and C, removing those silos that create unnecessary tensions between, uh, between teams. Nadia, thanks a lot again and see you next time.